All right, so let's get started with the texturing process. This is by far one of my favorite things to, to do. Uh, and I'm gonna show you some different tips and, and tricks along the way. Uh, but I also wanna give you some of the basics uh, so that you know I, I make sure I cover everything and you can you know follow along. So the first thing I wanna do is create a material, um, probably the, the most prominent material that I wanna use throughout the, the, the whole object. Uh, so let me bring in my reference in here. Right. So you see, um, most of the, you know, the, the bulk of the of the sketch, let's say, it has the same sort of plastic material. Um, it's just like slightly different shading and a couple of extra panels in here and there. But uh, for the most part, that is the plastic that I want to create or the, the material. Uh, but of course, you can do whatever you want. Um, I just want to recreate something similar to uh, this type of all printers or all Macintosh uh, stuff. So uh, just for that purpose, I would recommend, depending on the material that you want to create, to gather as many resources or as many uh, references as you can so that you can, you know, try to recreate that same um, look. So I'm probably going to go for something like this uh, that has a bit of, you know, dirt and, and stains and it looks a little bit older uh, just to to emphasize that, that sort of like sci-fi look that I want to go for. Um, so yeah, I have these references here. I just wanted to show you because that's what I'm going to have outside of this screen. And I'm going to try to re replicate that sort of uh, material. Now, one thing that is really cool with Painter is that as you create your materials and as you create your um, your textures, you can save them as reusable materials or smart materials. So every time that I do something that I like, I save it as a material and I can access it from my own library. So I have this one. Um, I call it OK Computer. I'm going to drop it in here just to show you what it does. And I'm going to go into focus mode so that you can see as well. So you see, it's very similar to if I bring in this this reference uh, is very similar. It has like a bunch of like spots and uh, dirtiness all around it. Um, so I think that works really well. So in that case, you know, I don't have to do anything else. Just drag and drop this in here. But of course, I want to show you how to build it or, or at least how to build something that is very, very similar um, that we can apply for the rest. Right. So let's go ahead and delete that. OK, computer um, plastic. And by the way, one thing that I should mention, this is a custom UI, um, but you can just reorganize things in any way you want to. So you can just click on the on the tabs here and reposition this maybe here at the bottom or here. So there's like multiple ways of doing it. I just like it this way so that I, I have anything related to the texture set settings in here, anything related to the shader here and anything related to whatever I have selected in here. And that's about it. So all I'm saying is that regardless of your UI, what I'm going to be uh, looking for are the properties which is what I have here, the layers, of course, and the the asset library in here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into focus mode. So Alt uh, Q and let's go ahead and select an area that we can focus on maybe here that has like plenty of, you know, um, curvatures and, and things like that so that we can really see the effect of the of the material that we're going to build. And in the layers, I'm going to click on a new fill layer and let's delete that one that is created by default. So this is going to be my base. Let's call it base. And a good thing as well is to uh, that I would recommend you do from the beginning is to name your uh, your layers. I'm not the best at that, but you know it's, it's something that um, I, I would suggest you do uh, from the beginning. All right. So this base layer is going to give me the the essential of the material. So if I want it to be uh, metallic, I can just push this all the way to something like that and create a metallic material. And in my case, I want to do something plastic. So those are the bases, right? I'm going to click on base color and I'm going to go for a something like this, right? In fact, you can use, uh, by the way, this tool um, is called uh, Pure Ref and I have uh, some tutorials about it as well, but it's a fantastic way to collect references. Uh, and one of the cool things is that if you want to select a specific color from a reference, once in Painter, you can just click on the eyedropper and drag and drop it in anywhere you want. So I'm going to select something like this dark color here. And there we go. So I just want to mention because that's probably one thing that I'm going to be doing constantly now. All right. So um, that's pretty much it. And I think in terms of the roughness or how specular this material is, uh, we're going to go for something, um, you know, something a little bit cleaner. In other words, something that is, um, you know, a bit more reflective like this. And the more layers that we add to to add wear and tear and to um, you know make it dirtier and that sort of thing, that's gonna change the roughness uh, in a much more natural way. All right, so that's a, a good starting point. Let's go ahead and create another layer, and this layer is going to only affect the color and the roughness. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key to enable just the color, and then click just normal click uh, for a roughness or left mouse click. So now we only have two channels. Now for this, I'm just going to select a different color in my reference. So it's slightly, slightly different. 
very, very subtle. Um, and when it comes to textures, I would say that this is one of the most important things to do, that um, it's all about the subtleties. You build complexity by very, very minimal, very, very small changes in the roughness or in the color. But just so that you can see clearly what I'm doing, I'm gonna make this very obvious, uh, like a blue color, right? We're gonna change that later on. It's also non-destructive, this workflow. Uh, all right, so now let's go into this uh, section right here. Uh, which is basically your uh, textures and we're gonna type grunge so this all of these come with painter or most of this I have some of my own but uh, just to be safe I'm gonna use uh, starter assets so that way whatever I show you here um, you can be hundred percent sure that come with painter all right so these uh, grunge are just black and white images so I'm gonna use something like this and you'll see that as I drag it um, this new section is going to be created. So let me just show you. Just pay attention to this area right here that is the mask of this layer. So all I'm going to do is drag this into the mask of the layer. So this creates a paint layer so that is non-destructive, like I said. So I can toggle this on and off and continue building this mask. Now, as soon as I do that, you see it's just basically showing me the areas of that um, where that blue layer is visible based on the mask, right? So that is pretty cool. Now, I just want to show you, I'm going to try to find a, an issue here. Um, all right, I think this one will be pretty evident. All right, so you'll see that this looks like it's an artifact, this area right here, uh, or like the, it doesn't look like the, the texture is continuing properly. That is because we use an automated process to create UVs. So the UVs of this object are not great, uh, as in they're not like for you know, production quality or anything. And I'm gonna show you that in just a second. So let's switch from this view to 2D only. So this is showing what the software automatically uh, sort of like cut and, and split so that it is a representation of the 3D space, but in 2D. So it's unwrapped, right? And that is the reason why this section right here and some other sections as well, they don't look great. But there is a very easy fix in Painter, which is changing the way that we are projecting that image or projecting that um, that mask, in this case, this grunge mask, uh, from the UV to Triplanar. So with this selected, you go to Properties, and you'll see we have this projection set to UV projection. So all we need to do is switch this to Triplanar. So this is going to be uh, something that we need to do for most of the things uh, when we use textures. And you'll see it is nicely uh, fixed. So if I go back a bit um, you'll see that we now have this gizmo and we can you know simply change and and yeah edit the position of the texture uh, we can also play with the harness and this is basically um, the the transition between the different planes of this cube uh, but I think this is pretty good and uh, we can also play with the tiling you can also switch here at the top uh, this is kind of like the contextual menu you can click on this to rotate the, the texture you can scale it as well um, but I'm, I think this is this is pretty decent so let's just move it around a little bit like so and now that we know what this is doing all we need to do is click on the color I'm gonna select something from my reference so something a little bit there we go like again it's very very subtle as you can see but this is pretty good right and then we can also play around with the roughness so Let's find like a reflective area and then I can play with the roughness, right? Uh, all of this, it needs to be very, very subtle, but the, the dirtier it is probably, or like if it is dust, um, the rougher it will be unless it's some kind of like grease or, uh, you know, some like fingerprints or something. <laughs> all right, so I think this looks uh, good. And this is just one layer, right? So I'm gonna try to uh, move a little bit faster now that I just show you the, the basics of how I build uh, complex materials, but it is more of the same. It becomes a very repetitive action. It's just a matter of like, uh, you know, which tools or which, um, which of these textures I use and how I change the color and the roughness. The rest is pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and right click and duplicate this layer. Then let's click on the mask. Let's click on the grunge spot. And let's go ahead and play around with a different one. So I'm going to use this grunge one in here. And because we duplicated this layer, it sort of like preserves some of the settings. So I don't have to change the triplanar or anything like that. Uh, all I'm going to do is change the color again. So you can see what I'm doing uh, to a blue color. Let's go back to the fill layer and let's go ahead and play around with the scale. Uh, you can also play with the balance of the actual texture and the contrast. So this is not bad. Uh, let's select a different color now. So that's, I think that's good. It's very, very subtle. Again, we can play around with the saturation a bit more. And of course, reduce the roughness. 
right? And as you can see, it gets more complex uh, the more layers that we add. Um, now that I look at this, I think it's a bit too intense. So another tool that you have at your disposal is to change the opacity. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of this entire layer or the color, at least, of this layer. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and do another one. So I'm going to duplicate the first one or like the second one. Push that here on top. Change the color again just so that you can see what I'm doing. And I tend to do this often, um, but it's purely so that I can really see what is happening. All right. So for this, I'm going to use something a bit more... Uh, with less contrast maybe something like this drop it in there and let's play with the with the tiling all right so that's not too bad now the next level in terms of complexity and playing around with uh, custom materials and that sort of thing is to manipulate or to add a stack of effects to your mask so right now the mask is made out of this uh, grunge so if i press the alt key and click left click on the mask i get this right this, this is like the preview of the mask and i can just move this around all right. But on top of this one, you can, let's say, add another one. So let's click on add another fill layer and let's go ahead and find a different one, maybe like this grunge map, drop it in there. It could be anything. So now what we have is one one texture on top of each other. Right. But you can blend these two together. So in this one, let's actually set it to tri planner as well. Maybe scale the tiling a bit. We can go ahead and say, you know what, instead of normal, I want to make it overlay. Right. So now this is overlaying on top of the previews. So it becomes very, very complex very quickly. And you can play with the you know, screen maybe, or, or maybe multiply, right? So that only you, you only see this texture in whatever these drops are. So that's another way to add complexity to it. And again, this is just two layers, right? We can also add uh, another one, maybe like this, uh, set it to tri planner, and maybe change the balance a bit. And this one could be set to overlay, right? Or maybe you can set it to subtract. So any of those uh, white areas can be subtracting. So you see, you can create really complex and interesting masks, but they're very easy to set up. There are only three, um, you know, black and white images. I just change it to, to have like different blending modes. So the result of this mask, if I click back into the layer, is what you see here, right? So in this case, we can just go ahead and select something again, darker. Um, Play with the roughness as well. Maybe reduce the, the intensity of that color. All right. So things are starting to, to look pretty interesting. All right. And to wrap up this introduction to the texturing workflow that we're going to be using, I want to show you the generators. And the generators, uh, basically one of the, the main reasons that we created the texture set, sorry, the, um, the mesh maps uh, or that we baked the maps is so that we can take advantage of the generators. Because most of the generators, what they're going to do, um, they're going to look at the curvature map or the ambient occlusion that we have in this object. And it's going to apply whatever we said, whatever uh, layer or property of the layer we want in those areas. So just to give you a practical example of that, let's go ahead and click on a new fill layer. Let's go ahead and hold the Alt key and click on color. It's going to be a single color like so. And let's click on this drop down to create a black mask. So basically we hit that blue color and in the mask with the mask selected, let's click on the magic one. And instead of going for another fill layer, which is what we've been doing with the previous layers, I want to click on add generator. Now in the generator, when you select it, there's nothing by default but we can select a bunch of really cool things. So one of the ones that I use the most is the curvature, but we can go for anything else. I want to click on the curvature just to show you what it does. So I'm going to click on that. And you see what it does is just looks at the input images. So we have the world space normal, the position gradient, and the curvature, right? Um, and it's going to apply this, and it's going to create a mask basically, and apply this layer, whatever those edges are. And that is why it's so important to have those mesh maps. So we can use something like this to add some you know, a little bit of damage to the edge or just make it a little bit lighter. So let's go ahead and play with the global balance. Maybe blur things a tiny bit so it's not as perfect, right? And let's go ahead and select this one and let's change the color to something a little bit lighter. And maybe we can also use the roughness and add a bit of roughness to these areas as well. All right. So not too bad. Again, very subtle stuff. I don't think you can see much difference, but it is there. It's just making those edges, those nice bevels that we set up in Modula uh, a little bit brighter, right? Uh, we can go ahead and do the opposite as well. So let's do one more, just fill layer, just color. And I'm going to set it to another blue color so you can see it. Create a black mask, create an ad generator, and I'm going to use a ambient occlusion this time. 
So the same thing, this time is looking at the ambient occlusion uh, map, but uh, I just want to invert it. So I'm going to click on invert the global. So it is applied only in this area. So if I bring in the rest of the objects, you'll see um, you know, the reach of this. So I'm going to push it down a bit. And this is going to be, you know, like a like a darker, I don't know, darker color, maybe more desaturated, like so. And I'm going to use, I'm going to enable the roughness and I'm going to really push it so that it's not reflective in this area. So it's kind of like the, the dirtiest part of, uh, of, this, uh, of this object, right? And that's about it. As you can see, in a few minutes, we can build a rather complex material with a few layers with very subtle uh, changes in the in the mask and the roughness and the color. But this looks a lot more interesting than if I were to just show you a simple color, right? So this is a simple base. This is with all the basics, right? Now, between now and the next video, I'm just going to add all the, the bases like I just did with this, for, but for the entire object. And then we're going to start using some more interesting techniques to, to really detail this, um, this problem. All right. I'll see you in the next video.